David in Chicago, Illinois. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better. Because I'm going to have you seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better. I'm going to show everyone else how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. When I cut the new Transitions genera Generation 8 gray lenses with Crizal Alizé. For your Oakley 8127, the Pommel, the 57, f excuse me, 55 eye size, color 01, the satin black. Let me take everything out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it to me. Your Oakley hard shell case. Of course, I'll get to that in a moment. This is also your Oakley cleaning cloth slash carrying bag. It doubles as a cleaning cloth, and when you don't want to carry the hard case, you can carry it around like that. I and use it to clean your lenses, and it's a dessert topping. No, it's a floor wax. I'm just teasing. Okay, so this is the frame. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping, and I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you, but this is the... Oakley 8127 color 01 the satin black in the 55 eye size and again this is the pommel now the thing about these this is extra nose pad so they'll fit just about anyone they have all different designs it comes with four it has the hard ones as well as the three soft ones that go in there and I'm sure there's got to be a video out there on the internet that shows you how to change these out by someone who is smarter than me I've only carried these for about nine months Oakley that is and I haven't had, had too much experience with changing out the nose pads yet um, But that's it. So let me pop out the original demo now one thing that is unique This one has a little bit more wrap. It's a little sportier than most of the frames most frames are flat across This one as you can see has a little bit of built-in wrap. So it just makes it a sportier unique look you have um, This is the satin black it comes black with the silver Oakley emblem. There's a polished tortoise as well as a smoke gray color and of course it only comes in the 55 eye size let me begin by taking out the original demo lens of which you will receive i'm going to take these out put the frame into the tracing element of my blocker program this shape into the computer you were secret agent 1943 and that way years from now should you ever need new lenses i can cut them right for this frame you won't have to mail the frame back a little stylus is going to pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine, authentic Oakley frame from me and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. Now I should preface this by saying I am an authorized Oakley dealer. But as a small independent optician, I'm told there's only 10 large companies allowed to sell Oakleys on the internet. So I was told not to put the pictures of the frames with prices on my website. So if there's any Oakley frame, just email me or call me and let me know what, uh, what frame you want, the model, the size, the color, and I'll check on the price and availability and hit you right back in the email. All of that will be in the, the description below. But let me go ahead and hit the green arrow which moves on to the next screen that's the shape that I'll be cutting your pupillary distance for the right eye is 30.5 so I'm gonna tap the minus button a few times till we get to 30.5 I do want to raise the optical center height up to 20 and let's go ahead and get your lenses prepped your right eye is minus 250 minus one and a quarter at 35 minus 250 minus one and a quarter at 35 let's actually put the power drum on zero make sure everything is where it's supposed to be put it on minus 250 take the lens out of the protective packet that it comes in it comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect anything from rubbing against the lens during shipping so I'm going to take that off put it on my collection here I've cut a few of these by now and put the lens in rotate into the spherical component comes into view first Find the center, the geometric center of the frame. Check your astigmatism correction. That looks good. Of course, I'll explain all of that in just a moment. Put three dots on your lenses. Uno, dos, once. And, ooh, I mathed wrong. And I'm going to put an R on the lens. Let's do the same thing now for the, and actually, as I like to do, so you know you're going to get this, the real thing. Your prescription minus 250, minus one and a quarter, 251 and a quarter. I will highlight that and of course these are the airwear 
T Gen 8 gray lenses with Crizal Alizé. Let's do the same thing now. And this is the right lens. And you're going to get all this packaging so you know that you're going to get the real deal. Let's do the same thing for the left. Minus 2, minus 1 at 132. Minus 2, minus 1 at 132. You are on the oblique axes. Put on minus 2. Take the lens out of the protective packet. Take the laminate off the front of the lens. Power drum is on 2. Rotate the lens until the spherical component, the minus 2, comes into view first. Check your astigmatism. Make sure that's lined up perfectly. Hang on. My little eyepiece is getting in the way. Still in the way. Oh, this thing is stubborn, stubborn. Okay. Let me do better. Let me do better. Bit of a perfectionist. You only get one chance to do it right. It takes me a few extra seconds to stop mayhem from happening, glad to do it. So, 25, 26, 91. I mathed wrong again. Okay, that's the left lens. Minus two, minus one. Transitions generation eight. Of course, you can see that here, the transitions signature generation eight with Crizal Alizé. And this is the left lens and if you guys missed any of that let me recap <laughs> so the um there's two different powers on here and one in plus cylinder one in minus years ago they used to put the cylinder on the front of the lens now they put it on the back so that's why there's a minus sign but i'll get your lenses prepped i just need to answer a text and email someone's working on my website now and all sorts of mayhem is happening so let me uh let me uh pick up in just a moment thank you okay sorry about that welcome back so where was that we got to get your lenses blocked so this is a block or as I like to call them Jenny from the block I need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers to these of which I will do now thank you just updates 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 to the website it never ends never ends build new websites update build new websites update back to the beginning so that's on there the little silver button on the back is a magnet that's going to uh, attach yourself to another magnet there in the arm pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line up the magnet and make sure everything is lined up perfectly check one thing we're looking good there and hit that button the arm's going to come down place the block onto the right lens we're going to do the same thing now for the left lens pull the paper away to make the black side sticky Ooh, that's real sticky. Line up the magnet. Check the pupillary distance. Oh, come on. Wrong one. That button, that button. We're getting there. We getting there. Get everything lined up exactly the way it should be. That's looking good. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down place a block onto the left lens. Now we're going to come down here. This is the edger. This costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. It's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. I recommend everyone go out and buy the one. Put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home. And you won't need this guy with the two thumbs to do it for you. The actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel. that's going to grind away your lens material from this size down to this one. This wheel in the center that has a channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. This is job ID number 1943. 1943. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex material, I would select that. But we're going to stick with polycarbonate because that's my go-to material of choice. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen in this frame. I am going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. want to press this on there firmly. Now the magnet is going to do its job the first and the second time tonight. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck. Or by now, you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes. The clamp shuts. The lens will be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the right side. 
In the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel for the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which you really shouldn't have any for this prescription in this frame. Now in just a moment the lens will drop down onto the cutting wheel. If you see light flickering in the background that is water to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lens is cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens during the cutting cycle. Whereas plastic, high index plastic and Trivex cut wet, meaning that water does spray onto the lens. Now water will spray onto this lens, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form on the edge of the lens. Now, as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel from flying debris in their Oakleys that the U.S. government issues them. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. It has and also the, the transitions block 30 to 40 percent of the harmful blue light and even comes with uh, three treatments known as Crizal Alizé. The first feature is that uh, it eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights and such. The second feature is that it's a, it goes by the initials ARC, which stands for anti-reflective coating. So it reduces reflection, so when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses, so it makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, or if you take a selfie, you're less likely to see your reflection in the camera or the flash in the lens. Now, the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that applies the Crizal anti-glare treatment costs well over a million dollars and takes over 24 hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. Your lens has to be washed in an acid bath, cleaned and dried in between coatings. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there to protect your time and investment. So your lens is completely flat, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out, it would stand up on the counter. Now it's getting the V-shaped bevel, so it'll stay inside the, the knife-like edge, if you will, so it'll stay inside the bevel of the frame. Now you can see the optical sawdust on the edge of the lens, also known as Schwarf. May the Schwarf be with you. Actually, it won't because the water will begin spraying in just a moment and it's going to wash it off the edge of the lens. Cue the water. Hey, that reminds me, I need to take a bath. What? And it's not even December yet? I know. I always like to take a bath right before Christmas dinner. Maybe I'll take one early this year. Get it out of the way. So in just a moment, a little lever is going to come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning disc. Something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool. And that's what's applying the safety bevel. Essentially, I'm just smoothing out the back surface of the lens any residual roughness from the cutting cycle. I'm going to smooth that out very nicely because when I press the lens into the frame, I don't want any rough edges to come in contact with your frame. Bit of a perfectionist that way. I don't do the front surface because that's not going to rub against the front of your frame. So let me take everything out and dry the lens off. Still a little bit of schwarf on there. I love it when it comes off in one large piece. We're going to drop it into the trash can. Run my thumbnail against the front of the lens. Make sure that's all off. Now, in the future, should you ever need new lenses, after you've got them popped out, and I'll show you how to do that, to put them in, I have the side I'm working on closest to me. Elbows touching my side, arms bent at a right angle. I tuck it in at the outside corner first. Using my thumbs, push down at the nose. And it does not, well, hang on. Yeah, let me take another tenth of a millimeter off. So let's do one tenth of a millimeter and hit retouch. That's retouch. Just like before, but instead of going to the cutting wheel, it's going to go back to the bevel wheel and take one tenth of a millimeter off going around the circumference of your lens. That is one millimeter between my thumbnails. I'm going to take one tenth of that. One hundredth of a centimeter until the lens pops in there easily. I do not want to force the lens into the frame. 
if it were forced in there would cause the frame to stretch or what we in the industry called roll if you can imagine your frame being like a gutter the bottom of your frame shaped like this if the lens were too large the bottom of the frame would roll outwards the reason so the thickest part of the frame can withstand that the thinnest part is always the bottom so it's tendency the bottom to roll outwards now a lot of labs who do a lot of work will use heat to heat up the frame it makes the plastic more pliable but I'm not in a rush, I'm not in a hurry. I wanna make sure everything is perfect. You live about half a country away from me. It's not like I could easily fix this. And I don't wanna rush it because it would give you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. So I'm gonna make sure everything is perfect. It's a corny saying, but the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra at the beginning. So let me take my time and do it right. The right lens always takes a little bit longer. Once we have the right lens perfect, we'll flip it over and start cutting the left lens. Dry everything off. Again, we're gonna tuck it in at the outside corner. Press down at the nose. Now it snaps in there easily, went in there too easily. Flip that over to L, press that on there firmly. Place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, or as I like to call it, the David. Tonight, hit the green arrow which is start. I want to mark on here that I took your right lens down minus 0 0.10, one tenth of a millimeter. So in the future, I'll, if you ever need new lenses, I can send them right to your home. And in order to take the lens out, let me take the block off. The sticker is no longer needed. Use my hand approved drying method. Throw that in there. Add that to my sticker collection. And I want to read the power first. We're going to turn the axis wheel back to 35 put it in over that black dot which is your pupillary distance read the power and I am getting where's my flashlight minus 250 exactly halfway between two and three that's because the unit of measurement is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r starting at zero and going up in quarter increments so 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 and one so on you're on the tenth rung of the ladder you are nearsighted with your glasses off you can see up close great but you need glasses on to see far away, so that's why there's a minus sign. You're, without your glasses on, everything is too large, so your lenses will minify down to the correct size. Once it's the correct size, you have an additional five steps, one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike with the letters P and F, so this first number makes everything the correct size. This takes away the fuzzy edges, so you have a two and a half diopters curvature on your lens this way 90 degrees away you have another one and a quarter diopters and that's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp let's check the power of the second curvature and we're ending up at minus 375 one tick mark away from four that's because you add unlike signs together or let's use today's term someone borrowed two dollars and fifty cents from you and then they borrowed another dollar twenty five they would owe you three seventy five that's where we're at, 375 in the red. Now, this number tells me where to turn everything, turn both axes to make everything crisp. A straight line is zero to 90 to 180. We're gonna turn that fine tune knob to 35. Your left eye, you only need eight steps of far-sighted correction and only four steps of astigmatism correction. We're gonna turn that to 132, just past the 90th meridian, stopping shy of the 145, if you will, at 132. Now, what's unique, is you're on the oblique axis you're at a diagonal line this way horizontal the x meridian the y meridian you're almost halfway in between at 35 and 132 so that's kind of unique these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number tells me just where to put the fine tune knob now this frame the oakley 8127 pommel sells for 183 of course you get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses with the purchase of any frame the transitions generation 8 brand new lenses is $99.99 I did have to go up because I absorbed a price increase from transitions guess what when they raise the price on me you got it I got to raise the price on you I did not have to raise the price of the Crizal Alizé which is a $79.99 only for the generation 8 so this came to a total of $362.98 tax-free the reason why this is tax-free is that I'm in North Carolina North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device and there's no tax on eyeglasses so again years from now should you need new lenses turn the frame over I pull upwards on the frame that way pushing downward with my thumb out pops the lens 
Again, to put it in, tuck it in at the outside corner first. I have the side I'm working on closest to me. Press down with the nose. Oh, you're going to be stubborn this time. There we go. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Take it out, dry it off. Let's check and see if there's any schwarf. A little bit, a little bit. Run my thumbnail around the edge. So I, instead of trying to reach across the frame, I turned around to have the side I'm working on closest to me. Tuck it in at the outside edge. Press down with the nose, it snaps right in. We can take the block off, pull the sticker away, dry that off, add to my sticker collection. Come down here to the lensometer, the lensometer. Turn the axis wheel to 132. Put it in above that black dot. And I'm getting minus two dead on. You have one diopter of astigmatism correction. When we check the power of the second curve, we're at minus three. Man, I couldn't do a better job if I'd cut these lenses myself. Pupillary distance is 30.5 for the right, 29 for the left, which is 59.5. Unless I mathed wrong again, I'm going to turn the card around so you can see the pupillary distance dots. Place the PD, the zero against my thumb on the right lens. When we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 59.5, just shy of the 60 meridian. Now, here's the point in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that when you get these in the mail, and of course, free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and the last time I checked, Chicago was still in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment, but because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments for free. Let's try that again. We'll do all adjustments for free. So if it's too loose or too tight or high on one side, just stop by your local optical shop and tell them. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. Um, but again, I'm going to go ahead and get them in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, when I take mine off and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I am wearing the BMW, what is this, the 6045, I believe. I can't see with my glasses off. Yes, in the 49 eye size and color, 50. Sorry, along came Polly. <laughs> I'm going to flip this over. Press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do. That neither, that neither temple is askew. That's what I'm looking for. Those are both even. So this is what your lenses look like. By the way, I send out a selfie request with every package. David, I would love to have a picture of you with these clear and a second one with uh, the Transitions 8 done. I mean, activated when you go outside. I also send out instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses so they will last you for years, but on your case, your Oakley cleaning cloth, the Crizal cleaning cloth that you're going to get, and the premium microfiber cloth that I provide with instructions on how to care for all three of those cloths and your case, so those two will last you for years. I field test every cleaning cloth, so if there's a wrinkle in there, you know that it works. I'm not going to send you a defective cloth, but this is what your lenses look like before they have been activated. The new Transitions Generation 8, and I'm only going to expose them to a burst one time to show you how quickly they turn. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to get dark. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute for them to return back to virtually clear. Now this is important, everyone pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time the transition seven and now the new eight don't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car, your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now the transitions extra active will get dark in a car, at least 30 to 50%. Now they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. We all work better when it cools off. Again, having said that, the transitions extra active will get darker in hotter weather. Now these, as you saw when it first came out, you see how amazingly quick it's turning back to clear. 
These will get as dark, the new generation 8 I find will get as dark as the extra active do outside in hotter weather, but they still won't turn dark in a car. So, still the extra active that has the advantage to that. So, the, um, what was I saying? If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter as freerxlenses. If you have any questions, you can email me directly at the contact me button on the website. Or if you'd like to type out long email addresses, it's freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below and I will respond. Again, I want to let everyone know I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I'm just not allowed to legally permit it to put the individual frames with prices on my website. Even though a million people sell them online, I was told that only 10 companies have permission. I play by the rules. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not in it for the quick buck. So I do exactly what they tell me. So if there's a frame you want, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or click the contact me button. Tell me what frame, the model, the size, the color. I'll check on price and availability and get right back to you. Again, this is the Oakley 8127 Pommel. It sells for $183. The new transition signature generation 8 lenses sell for 99 if i can get a stock lens they still don't have the brown yet um or the green i have to have those custom made and they're about 129.99 with the purchase of a frame there adds 25 dollars so essentially 150 for the brown or the green in the generation 8 if i have to have it custom made if i can get a gray out of a packet with up to a two diopter of astigmatism i can get these for 99.99 and of course the Crizal Alize adds $79.99. The Crizal Easy is $69.99. These are $79.99. Crizal Avance is $99.99. That's a lot of 99s. Provencia is $119.99. And Crizal Sapphire $139.99. So again, thanks for watching. David in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, home of the deep dish pizza, which I love so much. Who doesn't like carbs? Thanks again for the purchase. You can see how it's already back to clear again. Thanks again for the purchase of the Oakley 8127 Pommel, color 01, the satin black, and the 55 eye size. And everyone else has got the chance to see how it brings that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.